Hi, it's Jordan from This Week in Linux, and welcome to another distro review. Now today we're going to be talking about Linux Mint 9. I normally wouldn't talk about Linux Mint 9 just because it is Ubuntu with some extra stuff added to it, but I've had so many people request it, so I went ahead and tried it myself, and here's the result. Alrighty, so here is Linux Mint. So here you'll see, out of the box, I've made a couple of configuration changes, but not many. This is actually running in a virtual machine because my laptop screwed up with it. You'll see here out of the box, though, you've got this Welcome to Linux Mint application with a bunch of information that's wonderful for new users. I really wish that Ubuntu has something like this by default, but it doesn't for some reason, perhaps in a future release. We'll close out of that for now. Now let's go ahead and look at what's new in Mint 9. You see here you've got a screenshot, you have a new software manager, so let's go ahead and pull that up and take a look at it. And you know comparing this to the new Ubuntu Software Center, it's not quite as flashy, but it has 30,000 packages in it. If you click on any package you can actually look at the reviews, here's a score it's received, and all of the reviews that people have given it. It also has a built-in daemon, so you can come in here and install several things at the same time. Like I can install Conky, and while that's installing, I can actually go back, go to the featured packages, go wherever I want to, and install something else, and it'll just add it to the queue. See that one finished, and now a new one's installing. So moving right along after that, we've got a new backup tool. If you go into All Applications in your Mint menu, and go to Administration Backup Tool, You'll see here you've got the option to back up and restore your files from whatever location to whatever location. Great if you're moving from one system to another, but since it wasn't there in previous versions, might not be as useful immediately. You've also got backup and restore software selection, which should be very handy, something that, again, Ubuntu has needed for a long time. If you click on that, it actually asks you where you want to back it up, and then it makes a list of all the software that you've got installed, allowing you to choose what you want to back up, and only what you want to back up. You can do all or none, or just some, some subset. If I hit apply, it's actually going to make a small backup. It takes very little time and it just makes a text file. They've also provided a full tutorial on this new backup tool just in case you're not familiar with it. As far as menu improvements, you've got the ability to edit items in the menu on the fly. So if I right click on any of these, I can say add it to my desktop, add it to panel, add it to my favorites, launch it when I log in, that's pretty cool, and edit properties. So if I edit properties, it's just like the normal launcher. You can actually change the command, the icon, everything about it. Something that's not really easy to do in the normal Ubuntu menu. You can edit the transparency of the menu by going into the preferences, go into the options, and setting the opacity right here. For some reason in the virtual machine it won't handle the compositing. I'm not going to worry about it right now. I tried it on my laptop earlier and it actually did look like this. It worked very nicely. The only thing I would actually change about it is to keep the text at the same opacity as normal because it becomes really hard to see when you really move that opacity down. Moving right on down you see there's a new desktop settings application. If I run that and then go back to my desktop, I can turn on and off at the fly what desktop icons I want and what I don't want. If I want to add the trash in the network, I can do that, no problem. Mounted volumes, of course, being external drives, USB drives, anything like that, CDs, DVDs mounted. You can also change the windows, you can tell it to use GNOME compositing, to use the system font in the title bar, not a fan of that yet. But the big thing, you can actually move the buttons through here. Very cool. You can move it to the Mac style, like the new style, or move it back to the right. The right is what is still the default. And the really neat thing about this is the changes do take effect immediately, like you saw there. If I make a change, it immediately happens. Keeping things moving, you see we've got better look and feel. They actually outsourced all of the artwork for Mint 9. So they've got this default background that's very nice. They've got a very nice dark gray theme with green highlights really like that green icon scheme. It's been a long time since I've used Mint, so this is a lot of it's really new to me. But you'll see all of these desktop wallpapers that come by default, and of course these are the only desktop wallpapers that come because they are all Mint specific, that's all they wanted to include, and that's fine. Another nice, nice, very well done desktop wallpaper. If you look at the themes, you've also got all Mint specific themes. They're all green icon sets and very smooth, very nice looking themes. And of course we already mentioned the welcome screen. The update manager has a new icon, and I like the update manager quite a bit. When you compare this to the existing Ubuntu update manager, it actually feels a little bit more comfortable. When you click on an item, it gives you this large area where you can read what is actually going on with that update, what's going to happen when I install it. You change log warnings, all that fun stuff, and hit the big button to install the updates. It makes it very easy for new users. As far as improvements, a Windows installer, they've updated their new Wubi interface. You've got quotes whenever you open the terminal, which I thought was kind of cute. See here, you'll be a winner today, pick a fight with a four-year-old. You've got a new USB creator, which is the same one that Ubuntu uses, but it's been rebranded to work for Linux Mint. 
They have a new community website, which is very cool. I don't know how it'll be different from the existing Ubuntu forums, but I'm sure there will be some more information, tutorials, and stuff like that on there. So, to recap all this, I would have to give the look and feel of Mint a 9.5 out of 10, if not a 10 out of 10. I don't want to give it a full 10 just because I hope that there's some place they can go from here. They've done a lot of great work on the look and feel in this release. They've done a lot to enhance the user experience as well. As far as the usability, of course, everything is very simple. Like I said, the update manager is right there. Your software manager is right here by the menu button, so as soon as you click it, you get all the things you may ever need. And if you need something more, you can either type in to filter it, or you can go into all applications. Very easy to use. It's actually a lot simpler than Ubuntu, and even though I have sort of bagged on it in the past for just being Ubuntu plus a couple of things, it's actually a lot more than that. It's Ubuntu plus a lot of extra stuff. As an example, and a wonderful example, if I just type in youtube.com, go to the default YouTube homepage, and pick any video, I'll pick this one because I'm a big fan of StarCraft II so far, out of the box, Flash is working, codecs are working, very nice, very easy to use. I know that's been around for a lot of releases, but have, not having used it for a long time, this is a big deal to me, and it's very, very nice. So yeah, overall I would have to give Linux Mint a 9.5 out of 10. It is a wonderful distro. It's extremely easy to use, extremely new user friendly. Try it out if you haven't, linuxmint.com. They've got a full set of release notes there. Go check that out. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. One more thing I forgot to mention, I checked the poll at thisweekinlinux.com and it looks like OpenSUSE eked ahead of Gentoo at the last second, so I'm going to be reviewing that next Wednesday. I'm going to reset the polls right now, so make sure you go back to thisweekinlinux.com and vote for what distro you want to see me review next. Thanks for watching.